Aquarius, welcome to your Aces reading. It's Aces week, baby. We're going to do a deep dive on the Ace of Cups, Ace of Wands, Ace of Swords, and the Ace of Pentacles. This is not your reading. This is the baseline I'm using for you and all 12 signs as it concerns itself with Aces. So speaking of which, let's get on the same page about what Aces mean in tarot. Typically, what people think of first is a brand new opportunity, either coming towards me or one that we are creating for ourselves as we speak. The second type is actually the most common type, and that is renewed Aces. Ongoing time, energy, and effort spent in various areas of our lives, and we keep it going ideally because it's working for us. And if not, we should know. We need to take a look at that. So I should see a mix of both new as well as renewed, right? We're going to start with the Ace of Cups. Oh, there you are, right there on the split with the Hermit. Cool. What's going on, please? Show me Aquarius and their Ace of Cups. Show me Aquarius, please, and their Ace of Cups. Regardless of what I say here today, take what resonates, leave it just not. And if there's more than one energy on this board, then you reverse those energies as you see fit. What's going on, please? Show me that Ace of Cups for Aquarius. Show me that. Show me the Ace of Cups, please, for Aquarius. Show me the Ace of Cups. Show me the Ace of Cups, please, for Aquarius. The Hanged Man, the Moon, Seven of Wands. Oh, dear. Okay. Well, something is blocking up your heart space hardcore the hanged man the moon the seven of wands that's active defensive position to your credit you are trying to understand and make the mysterious less mysterious that's a lot that's a lot to confront though the moon of seven of wands the blockage in your heart space where's that coming from why does it feel closed off what's going on in there exactly the hanged man wants to know um but it's hard He's up against some pretty stiff competition. Okay. So that hanged man, his whole point of going upside down is to gain new perspective. And it might take a minute, but he will get it done. But the moon and the seven of wands, that's, that's a hell of an opposition. Um, that's a lot of active, uncomfortable things in there. And I don't want to deal with it, seven of wands. So somewhere in between the two, you're trying to gain insight. But it's up against a lot. What's going on? What's going on? Why does your heart space, excuse me, heart space feel so blocked? What's going on in there? What's uncomfortable to you that you're gaining, trying, bless you, gain insight on, but you are your biggest opponent here. What's going on? What's going on in there, please? I, I don't know if, if what's in your mind is, or heart, I should say, is in new, renewed, how you feel about either subject, because either subject makes you feel uncomfortable. Defensive blockage. I don't know if I can look at this too deeply, Christina. It makes me uncomfortable. What's going on? What's going on in that moon, please? What's going on in that moon? What's going on? I need to see. It makes you feel extremely uncomfortable. But you are trying to look at it. You are. To your credit. What's going on in there? What is going on in there? Let's, there's one more shuffle. I know there is. What is it? It just it puts you on edge, to say the least. You take it to a deep place. King of Wands, Four of Pentacles, Seven of Pentacles. Uh. Oh, God. You know, there's. it's hard for you to admit that there's a lack of enthusiasm in your heart space. You're saying things haven't grown in there in a long time. Does it have the potential to it, the King of Wands? Yeah. But he's not thrilled by what he sees anymore. Four of Pentacles and Seven of Pentacles. It's it's an admission that I'm holding on to what's in place, and I haven't grown much in my heart. It, it's hard for you to admit this, because there's pride surrounding these things. There's a lack of growth in you, feeling good in your overall sense of growth. Pentacles overall here with the four and seven you know you hold on to what you have grown but you're saying not much else has come of it you haven't felt your heart space shift in a long time or expand or feel full in love and it makes you extremely uncomfortable to recognize this why 
It's stagnation. It happens to everybody, but you take it to a deep place like it offends you personally. That you haven't felt love for your life in the overall sense or in it for a while. That you feel that you have to hold on to what you have accumulated, but there's, it doesn't seem to be much love in it. And this is hard for you to look at, like, why isn't there more love in my life? How come I don't feel it? How come I don't have a direct source to it? And I don't mean love as in someone else there with you. And that could be. That could be one of the many questions. I mean, how come you don't feel love in your own particular pathway? Where's your sense of excitement and being turned on and being engaged fully mentally and emotionally alert with what's going on around you? It's like you're really hard for you to admit to the stagnation that there's a lack of personal growth in here. What's up? And it ties back to your heart. You feeling good overall, but what you have managed to accumulate, you're saying it's not enough. And it's hard for me to admit it's not enough. It reached the top out a long time ago, and I'm having a hard time understanding that. Finding your place in your own life. It's almost like you're saying it's a forced neutrality. It's You don't want to think of it negatively. You can't really afford to do that. But you don't know how it could be positive either. Aquarius. What's going on? Let's see the Ace of Wands. Let's see the Ace of Wands. Let's see the Ace of Wands. Let's see the Ace of Wands, please. Let's see what you could be fired up for. I want you to get in touch with the love you have for you and your life. And the sooner that you admit that things are stale and stagnant and that you feel disconnected and that you have to struggle to access your own feelings, the sooner you can get on with things and start feeling them again and be open once more. But it takes an admission of what's the problem first in order to understand how to work through it. Okay. Ace of Pentacles, Page of Swords, the Hierophant. There is a part of you that gets fired up by the idea of committing to a new opportunity. We'll jump over to the Ace of Pentacles. We'll get there. But uh, that opportunity is something that you can stand by, whatever that represents in reality, because Pentacles, real earth energy, right? And Page of Swords, the Hierophant, Ace of Wands, the idea of a new opportunity ignites you. It's small, though. We haven't committed to the idea of the Ace of Pentacles yet, but just the idea that you could ignites you, makes you feel fired up, ready to start the day, that kind of thing. And, uh, like, man, the idea of committing to a new beginning, God, that feels good. Makes me feel alive. But Page of Swords is very small. He can only handle so much weight. So it's more of a feeling than an actual designation of action. I wonder what new opportunity was it commit to that would make you feel alive. Let's keep going. I don't want to press on that one a little more because now I'm seeing some activity that would suggest hope because the Ace of Wands, guys, isn't just passion. Light, fire is light equals hope. The light of path, the idea that you could have a solid direction again excites you. One that you can stand by and mean it. So what is that? There's such a small guy paid to swords. What is that? I want to, I want to push a little further. the ace of wands it's like you haven't it's like you haven't dusted off your passion in a long time your sense of hope direction what is this what is it you would dare barely to acknowledge that you could hope for but shows up in reality what is this 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 what is it that you would dare to hope for and dare to commit to it's admission it's a small one but it's there Hope is hope. I don't care. I don't care if it's a matchstick or if it's a bonfire. A spark of hope is a spark of hope. What is what is this? Queen of Pentacles, Two of Wands, decision-making, Queen of Wands. There's a softness here. Queen of Pentacles, Queen of Wands, Two of Wands, a decision to be made. <laughs> You've got to make a decision. Leave tonight or live and die this way. Fast car. Tracy Chapman. I love her. Always have. 
Um, it's crazy to me that her signature song, Fast Car, is now getting so much more recognition now than it should have done how many years ago? More than 10 years ago, bless her. She's a beautiful soul. And uh, it's almost like you got that same kind of pressure of a decision in you. You can leave tonight or live and die this way. There's something you would love to stand by and fully commit to a brand new beginning, one that's solid as hell, but also ignites you. There's a decision in here that involves your sense of direction and then also knowing that you love yourself in order to accommodate that decision of newness in your life. You have to know that you want it and that you love yourself and that it represents that decision, represents the best of you and how you would love and nurture and care for yourself. And then also, is this what you want to do with the Queen of Wands? Because the Queen of Wands is rock and roll, man. She's unapologetic. She knows herself well enough to say, this is what I must do. And sometimes you must burn bridges along the way, but by God, they burn bright. God, it's like you want to love your life again. You want to love yourself, you want to love your life, and you want to be able to stand by it. By God, is that a bad thing? All that just under your ace of wands. It's the potential of new, one that you don't quite see as being feasible yet. But it's a feeling that grows every day. A little more. I can see why your ace of cups is blocked off. If you don't feel so good about you and your life, that's going to be a sensitive subject. But then when you show me hope, it's a whole other life altogether. It's a good one. Don't get me wrong, going back to Fast Cars, Luke Combs, he did a beautiful job. He did a beautiful job of, um, of uh, putting his version of the song, but um, I don't know. I, I strongly, if you know what I'm talking about, and you saw uh, Tracy Chapman at the Grammys as a guest appear, that was amazing. That was so good. But I'm really, really getting that kind of energy for you. Except you're the person with good intentions who could have a fast car go in a different direction. Because you need to start your life anew. That's up to you. I want to see what's on your mind. Your master symbol, of course, being the Ace of Swords right here. Let's see what's on your mind. Any new thoughts? Or do you have reoccurring thoughts? Actions? Reoccurring actions? The sword is both thought as well as action. Let's see that ace of swords, please. God, I remember that song affecting me deeply when I was young. Very young. I understood it. I did. Still do. Very human. Let's see that Ace of Swords. Let's see that Ace of Swords. And she's right. We all have these decisions to make. You have to know what's right for you, right? Sometimes you team up, even if it's temporarily, to get through a moment in your life where you and that person were the same and you resonated. And then eventually you understand that what you meant to each other at that time served its purpose. She understands what she's doing. Now it's his turn to understand what he needs to do, right? And there's that decision in you. The decision in your life and how you would shape it. I know it's very vague today, guys. I'm sorry. That's real tarot. Sometimes it can get super specific, like I saw with Aries. And yours? A little more out there. Let's see that Ace of Swords. But hey, how do you know it's an Aquarius reading, right? Let's say Ace of Swords, please. The Hierophant. You might have some very interesting Taurus in your chart. Page of Cups. Ten of Cups. Oh, honey, you're killing me. What you want is so beautiful. You want a stronger reflection of the best of this world and what the life and everything it has to offer, and you want to stand by it. You show me pages, very simple pages over large-scale constructs. Let's 
you would love the idea of committing to something more, to be a part of specifically. You want to be a part of something more, something that deeply anchors you and you can stand up next to it with pride and say, I've committed to this. So it's not just a bunch of fiery, I, I got to make my mark on the world energy. No, yours is actually incredibly down to earth, extremely grounded, extremely committed. And it wants to be committed to something so much more than I am emotionally absent and I'm ashamed to admit it. My life up to this point feels like I've settled and it's hard for me to digest that, Christina. And I'm trying to come to terms with it, but I'm not doing a good job. Because every time you try to wrap your mind around where you are today, you're saying where you are today feels like I've settled and this for some reason is affecting your pride. And when you reflect outwards on a potential future, you see yourself standing up strong as the Hierophant and saying this, this, I'm a part of this. I'm a part of this Ace of Pentacles. I am part of something that loves and nurtures and cares for me too. And I stand by it proudly because it stands by me. And it's so oh, beautiful. It's Ten of Cups. You're talking emotional stability at the highest level. Family, friends, spouse, kids. <clears throat> Excuse me. The comfort of having someone by your side who has the same interest levels as you do. Loving, nurturing, caring, quality, support, making decisions like that every day. You want to be part of something that is emotionally stable and larger than you every day. Contributing to it every day. Committing to it every day. Waking up to it every day. But you show me pages. Like it's a nice idea. Why is it an idea? You have to come to terms with what's in your heart first, or rather, what's what isn't in your heart first. And then you don't have to really think about it so much or fantasize about it. It starts to become reality. But you have to know what your start point is. You cannot fix what you do not own. And you cannot understand how you can get out of your stagnation or settling energy until you understand that you're there and fully embrace it and say, this does not suit. Is that what's hard for you is the discovery of the truth? That way you can take a more proposed future seriously. It's an idea. But there's a wealth of your ideas in there. Every time you show me the reflection of something more, you stand by it like the hair front, I would commit to this. I would commit to this. I could, and I would. I would love to start my life in this avenue, this arena. And as far as I can tell, it's very simple things, but beautiful things. Commitment, family, kids, I don't know, home, love, and you keep showing me support, 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 to love and support someone and have them do the same for me. I need to push further on your thoughts. This one's still fresh, and you look at it, and it feels good. You started thinking about something greater than yourself, right? And your overall sense of victory in this life and earning coin and stability and something here that you long for that's missing because you see yourself in it. But it's a sight. It's a feeling. You don't act on it. Not yet. I need to see what else is on your mind, please. Ace of Swords. Oh, the aces can take us very different places oh the places you will go Dr. Seuss oh the places you will go a tower six of swords the knight of wands interesting tower six of swords the knight of wands And there will be other places you do not go. You don't know this yet. I'm not trying to scare you or be dramatic, but, you know, there's some things that warrant silence just because of the unknown is there and the unexpectedness of it. And This is something you have not given up on. 
I know you've tried to tell yourself to leave this idea, this feeling behind. It does not suit. Because you would be inauthentic if you tried to move away from these visions, thoughts and feelings. You trying to move away from it and telling yourself to move away from it doesn't suit. Eventually that tower will stop. In other words, you, Six of Swords, I gotta leave this behind, isn't true. It's not what you want to do. You don't want to leave this vision behind, this hope behind. There's life yet in you still. And when you stop trying to move away from it, literally, the Tower of the Six of Swords, and peaceful too, keep peacefully trying to leave this vision behind. Did it occur to you it's more than a vision? It's a pathway. When you stop trying to leave this vision behind, that that's not mine, but it's nice to think about, when you stop doing that, your energy rises exponentially into a place of movement. You actually become excited. Let's see that Ace of Pentacles, please. Show me that Ace of Pentacles. Show me that Ace of Pentacles. You look lovely. And how you envision yourself as a committed partner with family, kids, something. I don't know. But there's a wholesomeness in there and a completeness in there. That looks so good on you. King of Wands. Makes you feel good. Here's a King of Wands in you. That does not feel so good. When I was reflecting on the life that you'd like to enter, it came out again, but for very different reasons. Let's see the Ace of Pentacles, please. If you want to take pride in whatever this is, you can feel it from here a mile away. I could take pride in that life. Because I didn't settle. Or it's more than a Seven of Pentacles that I cling to with a Four. Let's see that ace, please. Show me the ace of pentacles. Show me the ace of pentacles. Show me the ace of pentacles, please. Gosh, dang it. Five of cups, judgment, the three of wands. Mm. The more we wait to consolidate these difficult feelings, it can also reinforce them at the same time, so be aware of that. Your ace of pentacles, which you showed me back here, would ignite you that you could stand by it's like the longer you delay, the worse the feeling gets. Okay, That idea of looking outwards onto the future horizon, hoping something will show up, is just going to create more of a pain, the judgment. You're being told here with Judgment Five of Cups that you have experience with waiting uselessly before and you know where it leads you. It's a choice. It's a choice to wait and linger and hesitate. And it's also a choice to make other decisions. You want that ace of pentacle, you keep an eye on it, of what could be. Three of Wands, guys, not my favorite card, because people will use waiting for all the wrong, excuse me, wrong reasons, and I usually see the wrong ones, and this is one of those cases. I'm not trying to pick on you, but I'm telling you, judgments attached to your Five of Cups, they've said, point blank, spirit has, that you know what it's like to wait uselessly before. It's better to engage with life than to wait for it to show up for you. They say you know this. We have to make decisions here. So that sense of regret and loss and I missed out goes away. We must engage and make decisions to engage in life. You want that ace of pentacles, you keep an eye on it. But you're doing that, maybe wait, maybe it's not for me. Maybe one day it'll just arrive at my doorstep. When does life ever work like that? Sometimes, true, we have opportunities that are afforded to us. But they're not whole life paths that just fall into our laps. What you yearn for, what you long for, is real. It's attached to a real construct. But you'd have to choose to engage with it. Because I see what you've been doing and it doesn't work for you. We've been holding back. This is not, you got one life. I don't know about past lives and reincarnation. Nobody does, not really. But if you're alive, you got this one life. 
The mediocre just doesn't suit. I don't want you waiting for anything or anybody, least of all yourself. Get in touch with the truth that's in your heart, and then you will know what to do. Okay. Anything else, please, for that Ace of Pentacles? Anything else, please? The longer you wait, the worse it's going to feel. Time stretches out, and it's going to feel more and more like a missed opportunity every day. I don't want that for you. Okay. I know. You're a couple of wands away. Ten of Wands, the full Ace of Wands, you're saying, Christina, it's really hard to open up and have faith in the new. I know. That's what faith is. Like any element in this life, you can either use it for you or against you. You can either believe in new beginnings, in the beauty that they afford, or you can say it's just not worth it. And keep hanging out at the seaside, low-key and longing and waiting for something to arrive that won't, because you won't engage with it. What will you do? Ten of Wands, the Fool, the Ace of Wands. Can the Fool, if he's inspired enough, go towards that Ace of Wands, which lights you up. And your Ace of Wands, which is really interesting, you're saying you have a default mode that says... You want to be inspired in life. And you can't feel your inspiration because your heart's blocked by understanding what's there. And for some reason, this causes you shame. A sense of not failure, but like you didn't reach your glory. Okay? Call it for what it is. I don't know if that's true. Only you can really make that assessment. But every time you point yourself outwards and you think of a brand new beginning, you default to an Ace of Wands and an Ace of Pentacles. You want to be lit and commit to what lights you. It's like you, you really want motivation and external motivation to live the best of your life. The only one who can start it is you. You have a very strong idea of what it could be and what it could look like. And I want that for you. But you have to know that you want it too. And the more you make that new beginning hard, the less inclined you're going to be to try to get out the door. So can the Fool and the Ace of Wands together push past that Ten of Wands and how hard it is? Uh-huh. Will it make his journey easy? No. I want you to address this. You're saying new beginnings need to be open and have faith, Christina. It's a right pain in the ass. It is. It is. But you got to tell me what's the bigger pain in the ass. Trying to start a new beginning and really mean it and feel it and open yourself towards the blast of it and make good on that ace. Or doing what they say you have know you've done before and it causes you more harm than good. Typically that's what waiting is. Okay. If you've ever known what it's like to wait and have nothing show up, you know the damage it causes. To long for something that's never satisfied or fulfilled then you know how damaging it is. Sometimes we must choose, and we must choose the hard thing, but that usually means it's the right thing. It depends on how much we get in our own way. I do know this. Under your Ace of Swords, whatever this vision is you keep trying to leave behind and discard, put it in the recycle bin, you don't fall for that either. What does that tell you? Perhaps it's better to be a weighed down fool than to have no feeling of it at all. Perhaps it would be better for you to have a brand new beginning, even if it's difficult, than to act like you have one that's going to show up any day and it doesn't. You tell me what the harder one is, you know? I'd rather struggle for a brand new beginning than to sit there by the water's edge and act like everything's cool and that I'm not waiting for anything. I 
That's what you want, and it's beautiful, and it's lovely, and it's healthy. Mm -hmm. Self-care, push and pull energy. That push and pull energy is coming from within you. You emotionally trying to reject what you currently have because you say it's not good enough, and that's hard for you to admit because you've built and accumulated something, but you also feel compelled to cling to it, even though you're not really emotionally tied to it. So there's one push and pull factor. The other one is the vision that you see and that you say you could stand by if you were in it, if you were just conveniently in it, if you were just conveniently in that life, if they just plucked you down right into that life of the Ten of Cups and the Ace of Pentacles and this lovely supportive, um, I love you, you love me energy, we're here for each other. You're saying, if I could just be thrown into that, I would sign up to that and I would commit to it, no problem. But the work it takes to actually get there, I don't know. Then you go back to square one, and square one's not satisfying at all. That's the push and pull between what you're experiencing and refuse to kind of admit that you're experiencing it versus what you see, and you realize it could be difficult to try to get what you see. That's the push and pull. In between there... You need to understand what self-care is. Love. Love of yourself. That will help you answer definitively your question. As well as give you a sense of direction. Drive and purpose. You either can fully step into this life and say you love it. And you take ownership of it. Whatever it is that you've built. And say this is enough for me. And you can stop fighting that. And this all goes away. Or you can completely step into this and no matter how difficult it might be, generate a brand new beginning and immerse yourself into that vision that you say you could stand by no problem. Which of these realities is true for you? Just own it regardless and then the push and pull will stop. Okay? Okay. There's something in here. Hold on. What is this? This is a double Lenormand deck. Many of you are convinced you have no options. A nor B. One, you don't want to admit that you're in. And the other one you can see, but you say it's impossible to get. Guys, one of these has to, you have a decision. When we, they, again, they've told you, this is what it looks like when you act like you don't have a choice. You end up unintendedly waiting for something that never shows up, insisting that you have to wait and see. Don't act like you don't have a choice. You have a choice. Number 22, the dual staircase represents crossroads, decision-making, A, B, two of wands, that kind of thing. Okay. Fox. Child, gift, official person. We have a clever thought here. We have a clever thought. There's something here about a child here. 18, the vulnerability. Even if it's not an actual child, the idea is vulnerability. Um, a gift, the official person. Somebody wants to offer forward a gift, and it's actually coming across as a clever thought with the fox. It's interesting. It's a form of engagement. It's a reason, something as a form of engagement, and it's coming across as I am officially presenting this as a gift um, to the person who's intended to receive it. So it's coming across, excuse me, as a clever thought, and I don't, I don't know why. It's not exactly malicious with the fox. The fox is just clever. Okay. Um, but there's something in here about I, I have a gift for a special someone, and it's coming from the official person, and uh, whatever that means. And it's, it's coming across as maybe a clever thought to engage with somebody, possibly, as an excuse. Well wishes and a gift and intention. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. How interesting. That may or may not mean anything to you. The oracles and charms are little bridges to the main story. They either fit or they don't, so don't worry about it if it doesn't make sense to you. Okay, 22, 14, 18, 17, 22. 
22 twice. Okay, we have the letters E, S, the camel, the conservation of one's feelings for careful consideration, also earth sign energy, Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus, the seashell, Cancerian energy, listening, listening, listening to our feelings. The stingray is in reverse. We're not comfortable pursuing any of this right now. Okay, and then for uh, some folks, last autumn or this upcoming autumn might be important as we have the turning of the leaves right here. Okay, Aquarius, I hope this helped you. It was very interesting today. I do. I hope it helped you. If it's not yours, don't worry about it. Check out the placements. It's different. There's the life you have, there's the life you want, and somewhere in between those two is the truth of you. Put in the comments. Take care. Be well.